The cursed ones were imprisoned within this land. Of course, you came of your own free will. <laughs> Hello there, Sir from 17 once again. This is my Dark Souls 2 walkthrough, and we are in the Black Gulch. So, in the previous video, I took off all my armor and all my rings because we were going through the pots that would corrode their durability and break them. Now that we're not in a place like that, we can put it all back on. The reason I didn't take my weapons off is because they do not degrade the weapons. I learnt this the hard way trying to get the Santia Spears secret moveset, but it turns out they do not affect your weapons, so you can keep your weapons on. But this is one of my least favourite areas in the game. I think it looks really interesting and then it just kind of plays like shit. It's a very small area, it's a very streamlined area, and it's filled with a lot of things that are just designed to kind of annoy slash frustrate you, and I, I find it to be a little bit saddening that something can look this damn interesting and be this damn annoying, but that is Dark Souls in in some parts, and this is definitely Dark Souls 2's uh, you know, biggest grievance with me when it comes to some areas that are less fun to traverse than perhaps they should be. But I had a a mishaps in recording here guys, for some reason my capture card failed on this particular fight, so the fight with the Rotten that you're about to watch uh, is actually on New Game Plus. I had to use an Ascetic and this is going to look uh, like a much different fight because his life is considerably bigger, he does a lot more damage and the weapons that I'm using do not do nowhere near the amount of damage that they would have done would it be New Game. So instead, what I've done for this fight is, instead of using my Resonant Weapons, which uh, Resonant Soul and Great Resonant Soul, as you can see, they do decent damage, but he has so much life, it's quicker to just hit him with the melee stuff, because I'm, at this moment in time, I was quite familiar with the fight. And the Rotten is, is actually very easy once you know what he does, and uh, don't confuse, you know, the lack of challenge in his fight for him not being able to kill you. He does a lot of damage if he lands, but if you have good adaptability or just good rolling skills, then you can dodge a lot of this as if it was Dark Souls 1. And that is what I'm going to show you here in this video, because I had no choice. This guy took my double maces really well. I found that the recovery on the, the power stance to moves was a little bit too long, so I decided to just two-hand a single mace. Looking back at this, it would have probably been quicker and more effective to just do the L1 in power stance, the double hit, and then just use that move. But, you know, diversity is the spice of life, and at this particular moment in time, I decided to do it slightly differently. So, instead you're going to get four minutes of a boss fight where you get to see his patterns, you get to see how I approach them, and hopefully for the people who are fighting them in a different way than the way I'm presenting, uh, we'll, we'll maybe get something from this. Anybody who's curious about how I'm covering bosses with this game, I am doing boss analysis videos. Be careful of this, I made a big mistake just then. If you are anywhere near the trajectory of that or this, you're in trouble. And the other one is one of those moves where when you're in front of him, it can be very difficult to get out of it. I, I made it look easy just then and I've had times when I was almost guaranteed I dodged it and it still hit me. So you need to be aware that some of the the dark magic moves that the Rotten can do, like these, can be a little bit tricky if you don't know what he's doing like this. Here it is again. That would have one-shot me if my roll had been any later. That's just bad news anyway. It's better not to disengage lock there as well, guys, and just roll away from it. For some reason, I was experimenting with some different methods. I was also thinking during the course of this fight that... I spend so much of it evading, I should really evade into his attacks, so towards the boss. Because if you notice, I'm avoiding backwards and I'm avoiding away from him, so I have to get close the distance and then hit him. So it, it came to me during the fight that if I rolled forward through the hits, regardless of what they were, I would be able to do more attacks. But at the same time, because of the way that the direct damage system works, you can be vulnerable to being attacked, and you can get hit by lingering hitboxes, you know, questionable phantom range, all that kind of good stuff, and... You know, this fight just took a lot longer than it should have. But when you get here, he's gonna fold like a lawn chair, because he's, he's really not a challenging boss. He's a very fun boss once you know what to do with him. 
he's definitely one of my favourite Lord Soul, just because it's an interesting fight. Like, he looks weird, he's kind of goofy. There's some nuance to it with him being able to chop his limbs off. Though, be careful with the limbs. I thought they were harmless once you chopped them off, but I did get hit by one of them when he did a ground slam. And it didn't touch me, the geometry, you know. Physically, it didn't land, but... I still got hit by its perceived hitbox, so be careful. And you'll notice I've come through here before, because I had to acetic this area. And there is your primal bonfire. So now that we've lit this one, uh, not too many more to go as we move forward towards the end of the guide and the game. So thank you for watching, and you take care now.